unlike many of our officers uh, throughout the years, uh, I had the uh, I had the experience of being able to infiltrate smuggling organizations both as a smuggled alien per se uh, that I was posing, uh, as a smuggler uh, myself when I infiltrated the uh, human smuggling operations in uh, Ciudad Juarez, uh, uh, in Piedras Negras, Coahuila, Mexico, and, and other parts, and. Uh, I, I want to make sure that our public understands that the human smugglers then and the human smugglers now are not on a humanitarian mission. Uh, they have no qualms of, about abandoning uh, people out in the, uh, in the desert. Uh, and that continues today, by the way. I, I just spoke to the brother of an individual who was abandoned uh, while en route to Houston, Texas, and, and his body was never recovered just a month ago. It gives our public our American public an idea that these individuals are in it for the money, they're in it for greed, and we see it when they take hostages in Houston and Phoenix uh, and other parts of the United States. The humans that they are transporting or smuggling into the United States become a commodity, uh, and in some cases stolen from one smuggling organization to another, and the families extorted to pay not only the agreed fees, but in many cases having to pay more, otherwise they're threatened with not being able to see their relatives again. So there is no such thing as a humanitarian mission. And I recall one particular smuggler by the name of Rosa Campos, who had been smuggling children from El Salvador for years, and on one particular occasion was attempting to smuggle 52 children from El Salvador to the U.S.-Mexican border on one load, including an 18-month-old baby that had been entrusted to the human smugglers by the family here in the United States. Each one of the children were being charged $5,000. During the course of the investigation, we found four children that had been uh, in the backyard of a house in Mexico City where they were forced to sleep outside uh, in very inclement weather. Uh, several of the children were found near the Tijuana airport after they had been abandoned, uh, not knowing where to go. So. That's a classic example of the risks that family members in the United States place their relatives uh, when they place them in the hands of smugglers uh, who they believe are going to treat them well because they're paying an exorbitant amount of money. And the, the violence and acts that have occurred for many individuals are all too common, such as an eight-year-old girl that was, smug that was smuggled from El Salvador through Mexico and subsequently was learned that she had been raped not only by the smuggler, but by several other men that were included in the group that was being smuggled to the United States. And we only had to go back to a few years ago where in 72 individuals that were being smuggled from Central America to the border city of Matamoros, Tamaulipas, Mexico, which is across the Brownsville, Texas, 72 were executed uh, before they ever reached our border in a very, uh, very public, uh, case that uh, I'm sure that many have seen. But this is just one uh, of many instances where uh, relatives have never heard uh, of their kin again uh, after they leave their homes. Uh, people are abandoned in the desert, in trains, uh, they drown in the river, uh, and the human smugglers continue operating uh, because that's, for them, it's a commodity. They're in it for the money. They're in it because they're greedy criminals.